Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, Worst Epic Gamer here guys, and I've got a very special awakening video for you guys today because this is not a regular awakening video. This is crazy special because Jasper doesn't feel like a hero in a video game, he actually feels like a cat. Like literally, you are about to awaken your cat, sitting at home right there, lazy as a bum, worthless, but, a, in, but this guy is not gonna be worthless. Jasper is actually gonna be usable after this awakening guys because I'm very curious to see him in action there's a lot of possibilities with jasper going forward so let's go ahead without any further ado let's start this awakening video let's see what he's gonna do and uh let's see the transformation that's what we're all here but first of all what the hell is that all right there's literally a mouse there that i just noticed right now i don't know where i've been i just noticed there's a mouse at the bottom of his book let me know in the comments if this is the first time that you saw that mouse there too. Like, is it just me? Or has that mouse been there the whole time, man? <laughs> I don't know, but let's go! Alright guys, so part number two of his quest, we have to do the Bountiful Cavern. So let's just go ahead, sweepy McDeepy this really quickly. Thank God they opened all dojos for us. Because uh, today we are done with Jasper. And we can finally see this transformation. Is it possible that Jasper is going to transform into some big giant dog? How about that? <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see. I'm curious. Without him or anybody else getting killed. Okay, this is very simple, guys. Let's go ahead. Hmm, what type of team? Let's go with Xanos. Haruk! Uh, Tanya! Why not? Why not? And Avior. Avior! Uh, I hope I have enough mixture of magic and physical. Come on, let's do it! Come on, let's do it! <laughs> That's kind of what I picture him saying. Unless it's a female. I have no idea if, if Jasper is a... Jasper? That's a male name, I'm pretty sure, but... <laughs> Alright, so if you don't have Jasper on your team, guys, let me just show you a couple of different things. Keep going! Alright, that this is his ultimate right here. Check it out. It's pretty dope. But he drops a bunch of um, rice balls and bells and all these different things on the battlefield. We'll go into that a little bit later because I honestly forgot exactly what it does. But I'm pretty sure that he drops a bunch of rice balls and uh, bells and whistles on your opponent. And uh, if they get too close to each other, they will explode. And this is in Chinese. Jasper speaks Chinese. Holy moly. I'm really slacking, guys. I've got to get going on my Chinese languages here because, damn, he just literally wiped everything out. This dude is incredible. <laughs> what a beast. My God. My freaking god! Also, guys, don't forget that Jasper did get a buff after the last update, alright? So they announced that they're gonna awaken him and give him a buff, alright? So. Here we go! What the hell is this? Oh, uh, yo, look at him catching them Z's! <laughs> what? Alright, so first of all, pretty funny animations here. So he's a tired little cat. And he's going to sleep like your regular, you know, ordinary cat. But he's got glasses now and he's a lot smarter, I'm guessing. Or she. Oh, that's definitely a female, right? Come on. Fantastic feline. Fantastical women. Whoa. How cute is that, guys? Come on. Let's be serious for a second now. I don't care if you're the most manliest man in the world. Beard up to here. That's pretty freaking cute right there. My dog will tear her up. But uh, <laughs> it looks pretty cute. And uh, what happened here? Nothing much. He's got goggles now, meaning he's got his glasses on. He's smarter. Maybe um, attacks is more. Let me just see. Midline DPS puts a curse on enemies that cause them to take damage when they are close. No, it doesn't say if it's a male or a female. Hmm. All right, so ruins have been a lot, guys. But that's not the most important part. The most important part is... The Awakening, boys and girls. So let's go ahead. Nine lives. Whenever Jasper takes what would have been a fatal amount of damage, he will survive. Unless the damage is equivalent to more than 1.9% times his current health. He will also recover some health. Health recovery will not exceed 0.9 his current health. This ability can be used up to nine times per wave. That is sick. Recovers 6,000 at level one here. So, you know what? I'm going to blow some diamonds here, guys. I want to get them to... Not all the way. I'm not going to max them out here. But I'll go to 23. It's about halfway. So 9,000 and halfway. 
that's pretty decent. That's not bad at all. And as you can already see, I've already enchanted him, guys. He's all maxed out to go, ready for battle. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to show you guys him in a battle and see if there's a difference in his abilities here. So let's go ahead. Let's take him to a battle. Haha, -ha, you thought I forgot, but I didn't, guys. I didn't forget the Forge because Forge is pretty important. It's not as important right now unless you, you know, unlock the bonuses. That's when it really gets good. But it would help you out a little bit. Now, here's a quick tip. Because I know what I normally do. I normally do a 50. You know what I mean? I The basic one, I go 50 times, guys. But if you notice my videos, you know that once it gets to like 30, then all the stats start getting negatives. Which means you're just wasting a lot of gems on going, you know, over 30. So what I recommend now is maybe go 20 at a time, guys. Or go 20 first. So let's do the first 20 like this. You'll see they're mostly going to be positives. You're not going to get too many negatives. And then we can go 10 by 10. This is going to save you some gold. Don't go automatically 50 like I was doing before because, you know, doing that is going to cost a good amount of gold. And I'm running low on gold now. Before, I didn't care about the gold, so I said, screw it. Look at this. Look at all these negatives now. It's not really smart to keep going because, obviously, you're only going to get a few more bonuses. But mostly, it's just a waste of gold at this point. So, that's pretty much all I'm going to do for now with gold. And then the rest of it, I can just go on my free summons every day. I don't normally like to spend too many gems here, guys. Just do the free, you know, free daily ones. And you'll slowly progress through the forge, all right? So that's pretty much for that. Now it's time for the battle. All right, guys. So as always, I'm here to show you how the hero actually works. Break down his ability. So I've slowed down the battle for you guys here. So we can actually take a look at what these abilities do. So uh, right away, you can see that uh, he doesn't have a normal attack like you normally think. He throws something different. It's either going to be one of three things. We will talk about what these things are a little bit later on in the battle. But I'm going to show you. But as you can see, he just threw a, um, a bell there. So that's a significant thing. All right. So once he throws a bell, a rice ball, or, or a fish bone, the enemy is going to be marked with that marking. All right. So keep that in mind, guys. He will mark the enemy. Now... Right away, he goes into his second ability, which is a Precision Pounce. Flies above an enemy unit and then pounces and scratches them for some magic damage and also marks them. So always keep in mind, guys, every one of his abilities is going to mark the enemy. So right now, he hits Shirley and she's marked with a Fishbone. As you can see there, he hits her again and now she's marked with the Bell. Boom! So the Shaman there, guys, and the Skeleton got marked with the same marking. Now, as you can see, we're going to break down the markings a little bit later. But just take a look, guys. Both of them have lost 96 energy, all right? So keep that in mind. They both were connected. They're too close to each other, so they lost some energy. That's one of his abilities right there. Now, uh, we're going to jump into his fourth ability really quickly here because fourth ability can activate at any time during the battle. He doesn't use it manually. It just happens. So fourth ability, it increases his dodge rating. So that's why it's so hard to hit, guys. His dodge is incredible. It goes up by a lot when he activates fourth ability. Whenever he takes damage equal to 10% of his health or is hit five times, all right? So whether he's hit five times or he takes a uh, hit that's, you know, 10% of his health or more, that uh, is what activates his fourth ability, increases his dodge rating, and then he also escapes with this ability. So as you can see, he jumps into his book and then he flies to the back of the battlefield on your side. So he's, you know protected from the enemy usually there's other heroes there obviously your, your opponents are not going to just jump on your side of the field like they are now but this is a campaign so i can just break it down for you guys all right so that's his fourth ability he will increase dodge rating now this is his third ability phantom claw summons a giant claw as you can see comes from above it's going to hit an enemy unit it's going to grab them and then usually it takes them and throws them to a different side of the battlefield somewhere else it relocates them and then this also marks the enemy. Like I said, all of his abilities will mark the enemy with one of three markings like we talked about before. Now, this will relocate a hero unless it just kills him. So like there before, like you saw, the skeleton is dead. So there's no reason to mark him. So that's why it's uh, it's not there. Now he's back to his second ability. So his only two abilities that he attacks with, guys, are his second ability, where he flies around and he just hits people, or his claw ability. Those are the only two, not including his ultimate. Now... His ultimate is a little bit trickier uh, because it does a lot of things unlike uh, other heroes. But let's talk about him really, really quickly here, guys. So it's called Arcane Whirlwind. Summons a variety of items, we, which we already talked about a little bit. But this is where we break him down uh, for sure. So summons three different items that deal magic damage to all of the enemies. Enemies hit by the item will, uh, will be marked based on the type of item they were. So as we already saw, we got a bell, we got a fishbone, and we got a rice uh, ball. 
So three different markings. They're going to be marked by that marking that hit them. When two enemies with the same item get too close, they will both take uh, magic damage plus an additional effect based on the type of item. All right, so that's to put it simply. I broke it down for you guys here. So if they get marked by the bell, you can see it loses energy. That's why in the beginning of the battle, you saw that those two, uh, the shaman and the skeleton, they lost energy because they both had the bell. If it's a fishbone, they take damage. If it's the rice ball, uh, they're going to be stunned, all right? So different abilities depending on what it is. So it's a little bit of RNG involved with um, Jasper, guys. You can never really plan on what's going to happen in the battle. That's why it's so, sometimes it's inconsistent. Sometimes you put them in, you win a battle. Sometimes you lose a battle just because, and then, uh, you know, a hero lost energy instead of taking damage. Something like that. So it's different. So let's take a look at what this does. Now it deals a good amount of damage here. There's the three items and boom, it's continuous attack. that just keep, uh, you know, continuously hitting. Now in this campaign battle, <laughs> They're too weak. They just got blown away by this whirlwind here. But in an arena battle, um, you know, it won't deal that much damage in a real arena battle. But I'm just breaking it down so I can show you guys here. Just so you can see what he actually does. Alright, so keep in mind, the second ability is going to fly around. is a basic attack. But look at the basic attack right there. It just missed. If you saw that, he didn't hit anybody. So there's a chance of it missing here. Now he's going to go into his ultimate once again. Mark these heroes with something but they're all dead right now and as you can see namtar was marked with the rice ball there so if there was another hero nearby and uh throughout the battle they get you know marked with a rice ball then they're both going to be together there and they're going to take some uh no they're going to be stunned i'm pretty sure the rice ball is stunned so yeah now it's one-on-one -on -one versus namtar here and he just goes into his ability boom now also guys don't forget i gotta show you this really quickly because you might have missed it if uh, it goes too fast. So I'm going to break it out. Check this out right here. Now, watch this. Namtar, as you can see, will be hit here. And you're wondering, what? How is that possible? Because Namtar, there's no other uh, there's no other unit here that Namtar is uh, hit by. It doesn't make any sense. But he will also mark himself, guys. Which is pretty crazy because um, it, it, it happens, all right? So he will also mark himself with markings. And as you can see, he's marked himself with a rice ball. And uh, Namtar is a rice ball, so Namtar takes damage just because of the marking, right? So that's another added bonus. He marks himself with these uh, uh, markings. And then, boom, he knocks him out with this uh, the third ability, the claw there. The claw! So, yeah, his abilities are pretty cool, guys. That's the gist of those abilities, uh, one through four. He's also got his awakened ability, which we talked about. But the awakened ability, like I said before, uh, that's only activated when he takes a certain amount of damage, right? It's, which is nine lives. So, unless he's getting hit by uh, big damage, it's kind of hard to kill him. But the dodge rating is incredible. And then watch this. So, uh, these, if, if you're battling with Jasper and the uh, arena battle, that's why I'm not showing you guys an arena battle. Because it's very, very complicated. There's a lot of things going on at once. It was hard. I tried the arena battles. It was hard to kind of show you guys exactly what's happening. It's really difficult. Too many things flying around. But the markings there, if it says excellent, very good, uh, good, that just means two heroes come, uh, were too close to each other, right? They're too close to each other, and the closer they are, the better the score, meaning uh, excellent or very good or good, depending on how far they are. So the closer, the better the score, the more damage it's going to do. So obviously those two heroes were there. Look at this, excellent, because Firehawk and uh, Dr. Zeno are literally right next to each other. So Kapuya, they take a lot of damage, right? That's, that's what the markings mean. And then that's pretty much it, guys. That will break down his abilities right there. So um, it's very simple to understand. Now the little kitty goes to sleep, killed off the enemy. And I am a very proud and proud owner of Jasper. Now, I, like I said, I tried him in the arena. A lot of different results. Did pretty good uh, Did pretty good in a couple of them. Not so good in other ones. It all depends on what your uh, enemy is, guys. Because if he gets um, you know, trapped or stunned, that's the way to beat Jasper. you got to stun him, guys. If you stun him, he slows down. He takes a bunch of hits at once. And then his HP is not that good. He dies really quickly. Defenses are low. He dies really quickly. If you cannot stun him, he's going to fly around the whole time. He's going to just cause a bunch of havoc. His ultimate is pretty powerful. So, yeah, that's what I learned. So, anyways, let's move on, guys. All right, guys. So, there you have it. Jasper in action. That was pretty fun, actually. Watching him go all over the place is exciting. You really can't see him unless you slow down the video because it's really, really fast. His abilities are insane. He's all over the place. But all in all, it's very exciting to have Jasper awakened. I'm, you know, I can't wait to try him out a little bit more. I got to keep working on this ability here. I want to max it out to the end. 
it, I don't know how much it's gonna hit, and I need to give him some kind of a pet here, so maybe I should've given him a pet before, but, uh, let's see, let's just give him this one right here for some max health, I think that should be okay. But that's pretty much it for today, guys. So that's Awaken Jasper for you. Let me know if you have him. How do you enjoy him? How do you like him? It's cute to have on your team. You know what I mean? The damage output is not crazy good. But it does play a role in certain teams, all right? Which we have to test out some more. But for now, I'm going to end it off here, guys. I will check you guys next time on another Soul Hunters video. Till then, have a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Peace out, everybody.